AMD is crushing it in the mobile department and is finally going to update the drivers to their older graphics cards. Get ready for the iPhone Ultra and Nvidia finally fixing a few things. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story is about a brand new APU that AMD is going to be releasing for mobile processors. The 780M, which is supposed to be the spicy graphics card that you're going to find in their more mid tier like gaming setups is looking to be a heavy hitter, especially when you compare it to something like the Steam Deck. What we're finding is that it's nearly twice as fast as what Valve brought to their gaming console, and it's about 25% faster than what you can find in other gaming consoles like the iNeo 2, which has a 680M. So this is only based on Time Spy scores, but you can see that it hit around 3000 points, whereas the 680M hits 2400 and the Steam Deck hits around 1700. So this bodes really well for budget gaming laptops because something like a GTX 1060 hits around 4,200 points. So we're finally getting close to the point where you do not need a discrete graphics card for regular 1080p gaming. It seems like we're catching up very quickly there. And a lot of this is thanks to the fact that it's running AMD's new RDNA 3 architecture. However, because of that new architecture, there's like gonna be some games where it does perform well in and other games where it doesn't. But for the most part, based on this one benchmark, I'm really really excited. I get crap every single time I say that the Steam Deck is underpowered, but honestly, for all of the games that I want to play on it, AAA titles, the Steam Deck really doesn't deliver enough oomph. It is a great value gaming handheld at $399, but it simply cannot deliver the performance that I'm looking for that I want to enjoy. And something like the iNeo 2, while it does do a lot better, it's still actually falling short in a lot of ways. Like it's just, it, it'll get to the FPS, but I want to play, but I really want to be able to play most AAA titles in 720p 60 FPS at medium settings. That's all I'm asking for. And the Steam Deck just absolutely cannot do that. You have to do workarounds if you want to get that in a lot of games. And I want better. I want I want Valve to actually come out with faster graphics in the Steam Deck. That's my personal opinion. People constantly say, hey, no, that's not OK, which I just I understand why Valve's keeping it simple and not releasing a different SOC on the Steam Deck. I just wish they would. That's my take. Let me know yours down below in the comments while I let you know about today's video sponsor, Green Man Gaming. And my friends, in case you're excited for Hogwarts Legacy like I am, you can actually go on over to Green Man Gaming and save 15% on both the deluxe edition as well as the regular edition, depending on which one you want to pick up. Personally, I, before they even sponsored us, I have already purchased Hogwarts Legacy deluxe edition from Green Man Gaming because it was 15% off. And when you get the deluxe edition, you actually get early access to play it tomorrow, February 7th. So you save a whole lot of money. And this is the first time that I've seen a deluxe edition come in cheaper than just me buying the regular game on Steam, 59.49 with the 50% off here in the United States. That makes it so it's just, it makes so much sense for me to buy the deluxe edition. I get to play it early. I saved a lot of money and I'm supporting a company that is a great sponsor of ours. So if you're looking to get Hogwarts Legacy, Green Man Gaming is going to be the place to pick it up for Steam. They have a whole host of other games that you can pick up on their website. They're a legitimate key reseller supporting the developer supporting the platforms that you love to play on. I always feel good when I buy from Green Man Gaming. I think you will too. Check it them out at the link in the video description. Save that 15%. It's going to be good for you. And what's good for AMD is to actually communicate with their customers. And finally, they are doing that with regards to their drivers on their older graphics cards. You might remember that AMD hasn't updated them in over two months. Yeah, if you're on the RX 6000 series, RX 580 or anything like that, they don't care. They're just they're not going to upgrade you on the drivers, which I the response Response to that was like, who cares? If it's not broken, don't fix it. AMD not really communicating that way. It does seem like they do care, saying that they're now working on new AMD drivers for 6000 series and prior gen cards. Aiming to release them within the next two weeks will provide another update if we run into any delays. And as we get closer to posting them, thank you for your patience. Why would you need to be patient? Oh, because they've been delayed. Where was this communication two months ago saying, hey, we're gonna have to change a few things. Video guards actually followed up with them to find out what's going on. Like, why are you releasing separate drivers for this one set of cards? Is it, is it gonna be put together? And Frank Azor from AMD saying, we remain committed to our unified driver strategy and we are working to get there again ASAP. So actually not answering
answering the question whatsoever, just kind of speaking around what video cards was actually asking. It does seem like we're going to have to wait for RX 7000 drivers and RX 6000 drivers to come out separately at this point, despite the fact that AMD published this slide in 2021 showing that they release more driver updates than Nvidia, that they have better con driver consolidation and they had higher testing volume than Nvidia. So this is over a year ago that they released this, but they've kind of fallen quite a bit since that. They're not consolidating their drivers. They're separating them out. They're releasing fewer releases for the vast majority of their customers. And now two months after they've stopped updating them, they're just saying, hey, two weeks, baby. Just wait two more weeks. And if, in case you want cheaper B650 motherboards for your gaming PCs, w wait longer too, because AMD is saying that they're, they're gonna work on expanding that in 2023, hopefully getting cheaper price points on these, especially when they said that they should be cheaper and then they just haven't been. But you want things to be cheaper, you come here to Hot News, Reese brings you the UFD deals because we got the hottest tech deals out on the internet for you. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals to bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet. It's Monday, Monday. Hopefully these deals get you started off on the right foot. First up, we have this ID Cooling IS50X V2 low profile CPU cooler with a ton of RAM compatibility. It's a perfect pickup for a small form factor builder that only $19.99, it is 33% off. And then moving on, we have the Sony WFC500. These wireless in-ear Bluetooth earbuds have a 10 hour battery life and IPX4 water resistance. You can pick these little guys up for only $68, which is 32% off. And then moving to the visual front, we have this Lenovo Create a 27 inch IPS 4K monitor. I love this modern trend of monitors that are actually just more than monitors this one has built-in speakers a decently sized usb hub and a wireless charging pad for your phone on the stand it also helps that it looks good and at only 349 dollars 99 cents it is 50 percent off and then lastly this one is unfortunately only for my south african friends but let's face it we actually needed a win you can pick up the 43 inch samsung q90b which is a 4k neo qled smart tv with 144 hertz refresh rate you can currently pick one up for only 9999 rand which is 8000 rand off honestly this would make a better gaming monitor than a tv but you know do with it what you want and like always you can find the links to these and more down in the video description down below and with that i'm hand you off back to brave for the rest of your hot news cheers thank you reese you know we don't share a netflix thing but it's a good thing because we would have a whole lot of concern right now whether netflix is going to charge us more for sharing it's been something that's been out in the news lately that netflix is going to be cracking down on password sharing and it came out last week that they were actually going to implement where you had to log into the home wi-fi within 30 days but it's like not quite clear what they're going to do if that doesn't happen at this point because it's not going to apply globally because they've only had information with password sharing in Chile, Costa Rica and Peru where you can pay to allow people to password share. So that's not happening in the US. It's kind of nebulous what's going on. Obviously, Netflix is trying to just squeeze more money out of people. I've heard the reports that like Netflix is going to cause more piracy based on this, which is like partially true but at the same time i don't think netflix is gonna lose too many customers because the people who are paying will continue to pay and the people who weren't paying are still not going to be paying there's only like mild upside here and even if they upset the people who are sharing the password it just means that they're going to drop them off and reduce server costs maybe because less people are going to be streaming they actually might be net positive here which speaking of companies doing weird things that are pissing off their fan bases let's talk about twitter for a second because despite the fact that elon musk came out and said that everything that twitter was going to do and major policy changes in the future was going to be decided by twitter poll he decided not to make that happen when it came to api access simply cutting off api access to a whole host of features and bots and then came out saying that oh wait 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 people are upset by this which you could have seen if you had actually implemented a Twitter poll. We're gonna we're gonna change it so that like if you are providing good content, you can get access to the API for free because Pepito the cat was like, oh, you're gonna ruin our access to posting that Pepito is home, which is a Twitter account that just tracks a cat going in and out of the cat door. And he said, we, I guess we could give all verified users access to API for posts like this. So you'd have to pay $8 a month, which is cheaper than what was the speculated price. But now saying that it could be free, which like, this was the whole point of you saying that things could be eligible to be voted on by polls and then you didn't 
do it. And then people got upset and now it's just, what's going on? I don't know. This is on top of the fact that last week YouTube rolled out monetization sharing for creators when it comes to YouTube shorts. And then he posted on the same day that Twitter will share ad revenue for creators for ads that appear in reply threads, but you have to be a subscriber to Twitter Blue. So you have to pay Twitter $8 a month to potentially make 30 cents every six months because you got an ad for a ga sports gambling in a post that you made, which I've, I've talked at length on our stream about why I think that this is gonna backfire on Elon Musk, but we can discuss that later. But on top of that, with the check mark situation, turns out that Elon Musk has a different plan for charging businesses, expecting that they're gonna pay up to $1,000 a month for them to have a golden check mark in order to verify that they're a real business on Twitter, and then $50 for every affiliate business that's associated with that main company, making it very expensive for small businesses to actually even run their companies on Twitter. Which Elon says that Twitter's trending towards break even, posting that in a, a tweet, saying that as we had to save Twitter from bankruptcy while fulfilling essential Tesla and SpaceX duties, wouldn't wish that pain on anyone. Twitter still has challenges, but now it's trending to break even if we keep at it. Public support much appreciated, which is a really strange thing to say when the reason that the company was trending towards bankruptcy or headed towards bankruptcy was because of the debt that you saddled on it from purchasing it and that the company, while not profitable, had plenty of cash reserves, was gonna be able to go for years on end and probably could have raised more money. They didn't have a bankruptcy problem until you showed up, which according to some people in the comments, that's a hot take. And Apple's hot take is that you want to spend more on an iPhone with it now being reported that Apple should be releasing in 2024 an iPhone Ultra because they're finding, at least Tim Cook said in their latest earnings report, that while, you know, their middle level phones of like $699, $799 have been experiencing a little slower sales, people are okay to pay a ton of money for the best. So we're going to up that best amount to cost more than the $1099 that the current Pro Max starts at. So potentially expecting some something like a 1499 flagship phone to come out from Apple to just saddle your wallets. I'm curious what feature sets they're gonna bring out to help justify that price point. I know that we have a lot of Apple skeptics in the audience here. I do think that re despite all of Apple's crap, that they still will have to at least publicly justify why they're charging more as we trend towards higher and higher and more expensive phones, which in case you're looking at getting a higher end SSD, PCI Express 5.0 SSDs have now started to roll out and turns out that they are spicy. The world's first consumer 5.0 SSD uh, has a public trade-off, which is a loud fan. It, small fan, go real loud because it goes very fast RPM. Your storage is no longer gonna be quiet. It's gonna have a moving part. It's going back to hard drives, my friends, and we're going to PCI Express 5.0 GPUs as well, not just SSDs. The MTT S80, the world's first PCI Express 5.0 GPU coming out from China, and somebody was actually able to get their hands on it and test it out, and it can run Crisis, okay? It's supposed to run DX9 and DX11 APIs. Not really well, but I honestly think that this is a very good looking car just as a sidebar, but somebody was able to actually get it running crisis for the moment. However, you can see that we have to give at least some praise to Intel for their first discrete GPU gaming graphics cards, because look at what the MTT S80 has come out with. It is 61% slower than the ARC A770 at 1080p. Despite it having PCI Express 5.0, it is a much slower card in general, and it shows that you actually do need a lot of engineering to even come out with the basics. But in case you're trying to basically play The Last of Us Part 1 on PC, it's gonna be delayed. It was supposed to come out on March 3rd. Now it's being delayed till March 28th, which is a couple weeks after when the HBO show will end, which probably will reduce the amount of people who are like gonna be wanting to play it. Like the Cyberpunk Edge Runners effect on Cyberpunk, people were just able to go play the game because the patch came out before the show did. And now the show's gonna end and then it'll launch on PC. It's, it's not great timing, but an update that's coming to NVIDIA graphics cards is RTX Video Super Resolution, which is now officially supported in Chrome. NVIDIA talked about this at CES, but essentially it will allow you to take low quality YouTube videos like this one, which you're watching in 144p, and then upscale it to a higher technology, and mostly like getting it from 1080p up to 4K and making it so that it's uh, slightly higher quality. As you can see in their demonstration here, upscaling the video to 
make it look slightly better. And Nvidia making their GPU slightly better from the way that they were downgraded earlier to be good now because the Nvidia Discord performance bug, that was a great segue, is now fixed according to Nvidia saying that they rolled out an app profile update for Discord. All you have to do is restart your computer and that it'll be automatically applied the next time you log into Windows. This is not a driver update. This is not a, an official Windows update. This is an app profile update that's happening to the GPU, so you don't have to do a whole lot behind the scenes. But in case you had performance degradation because of the latest Discord update, it's now been fixed by NVIDIA. And this episode of Hot News is fixed to be done. It's fixed like a like a pet. We're neutered now. Bye.